Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in too. If you are new, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play and giving my channel a try. I hope you like what you see. Hit like, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. And if you're a returning stitching friend, thank you so much for being here and uh, sharing some stitching with me. I am going with no lights today, although I thought about it. We are, uh, it's very, well, not very early, but it's early in the morning and we are dreary and dark and rainy out today. So uh, I think I have enough light here by these windows and we're just going to give it a try and see what happens. Okay, so this week I did put out an extra video. I did a scrap with me. This is my scrap with me number four. So the first two I kind of talked about different types of books that you can use. Uh, I think I talked about adhesives and tapes and all things and extra things like that. What's funny is video two is where I kind of made my decision for my own scrapbooks, but there's lots of options. And so those two are, are it. The third video I did, I actually did a couple of pages and uh, talked about how I did those. And then this last video, I did two more pages, but my combination this time is I took some of the more traditional elements of scrapbooking, and which means using pictures, and combined them with my stitching. And so I have a couple of full finishes on these two stitch pieces that I'm super excited about. I love them. I sent pictures to the kids just to show them what I did, and they love them. So uh, that's a lot of fun, too, because they highlight prominently in these uh, two layouts that I did. So let me show you the layouts. I am not going to talk about supplies or anything I may or may not have done. If you would like to see a more in-depth uh, look into that, just check out the, the previous video. It's right before this one. It was midweek. It's about a 20 minute video, so it's not super, super long. I taped part of it and then I taped the second part after I did some of the, like the noisy stuff and all of that kind of thing, the cutting and, and all the figuring in that sense. So it's there if you'd like to see it. All right, so let me show you real quick. Now I'm gonna go up, let me show you the piece first. So this is my first one. And what I was fully finishing was this piece right here. So this is uh, Amsterdam, pretty little Amsterdam, I believe, from Satsuma Street. And Megan sent me pictures and this is what it looks like. So, so fun, I really like that one. And then, now I don't, I'm gonna put these over here. I don't want those to go get, uh, I was gonna say wrinkled, but bent, that kind of thing. This next one is a two page layout because I had so many pictures. So I'm gonna show you the first page to show you the picture first. So this is this is the full finish for this one. This is Nubble and it is from By the Bay Needle Arts on Etsy. And let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Both pages at the same time. There we go. Cross stitch pictures, washi tape stickers, and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And I really feel like it shows up and highlights the stitching and our time in Maine. So, like I said, if you would like to see a more in-depth look into those, just check out the previous video. I have no idea. You know, I know some people say link, they'll link it up there. But then if you click that on, you've left this video. So, you know, just go one video before. All right, so stitching. I have 10 pieces to show you today. I have one finish and no new starts. I've uh, just really enjoying the ones I have now. I did, what, four starts the very beginning of February. So now I'm kind of going back and enjoying stitching what I'm stitching, those starts and or others. Um, I might have another couple starts in February, but I don't know. I there's not necessarily something that's really, well, I shouldn't say that. There is one thing that I might consider. I'm not 100% sure I'll get to it this month. But uh, I would be surprised if there were that many more. I'd have to find things that I really, really want to start uh, to see a start. Okay, now, this first one, I am just showing you the black and white photo from, it's a digital pattern. You're not, you're gonna see the colors when I show it to you. So I decided I, I wasn't gonna bring it up on the iPad. And this is from Cosetta Gogo and it's the poppies. So they, uh, she has a set of these in her shop. I've done one. This is my second. I don't know if I'll do the third or if I'll just stop at two. 
just that gives you just the basic idea and that really shows you the outline and that lacy outline you know the border that's that's kind of why I put this away for a while because I haven't stitched on this for a long time and I made a note for February that I wanted to give it some time it got some time already but I do want to at least pull it out one more time in February to try to get a little bit more done so let me show you where I am that's what it looks like and this is 18 count Old West from Color and Cotton. I decided because these are such bold, bright colors, I decided that the neutral would work well with that. With the idea, and in person, it comes up a bit more than it does on the on the camera. But I wanted to make sure that it wasn't so light, though, that this border blended in because that's a lot of work, and that's going to be completely around the piece. So I did want to make sure I could see it because I wasn't going to stitch all that and not be able to see it. I fully finished this little flower right here, got all of that done, did some more greenery, a little bit here, and then I started to plug away some more on the border. And that's really what I need to do a lot of because I have quite a bit left. And I start to, you can start to get in a groove. You can see the bottom part, it, it can be kind of like part of, you know, just continuation stitching and then the top part I can do that as well and I can do that in either of the sections. So I started to just kind of bring down the bottom and do it that way. So there's still a lot of stitching, especially with the border on this one. So I would like to give it at least another uh, uh, stitching session this month because I'd feel bad if I put it away quite yet. I think it, it could use some more work. I mean, at this point, except for Oh no, I do have a flower up here. And that's part of why too, I like to do the borders and then I make sure everything lines up and I'll count the flower off of the border. So I have one big flower up here. This one's almost done, but then really down here, it's just all sorts of greenery, which is fairly quick to stitch. But again, I, I wanna continue doing the outer edges with it because if I just do the flower and all of the inside, I'll never go back and finish this one. And I think these would be nice. I haven't decided, I have to look at the sizing, whether or not they would go side by side on a 12 by 12, a 12 page, a 12 by 12 size layout, or if I would do two smaller ones and have them be opened up when the book opens up, they'd be side by side that way. They're two different neutrals that I've stitched them on. And I meant to look for the first one so I could show you. And I did a quick look, I couldn't find it. So I gotta figure out where it is, but, um, you know, they're not 100% the same, which is fine because they're different types of flowers. I think the first one was daisies that I did. So that's that one. So you should see this one again at some point this month or this month's stitching. I'm not sure if I'll do it this week or if I'll give it a week's break. Okay, next. Oh, what happened to the cover sheet? I, let me do a quick look. <laughs> when I had all of these, I did the ironing and I was getting ready to carry these because I, I ironed downstairs. And then I bring them upstairs because this is where I videotape. And I was carrying them and they dropped right out of my hands. <laughs> now, luckily they were for the most part in order. Oh, here you go, here it is. But, um, I'm, I was afraid maybe I messed up where everything was. This is the cover sheet right here. And luckily all that, I well, it's not really, it takes me five minutes to iron. I mean, I put the iron on, I get it nice. Oh, I've got this hair sticking out. Hold on a second. I put the iron on, I let it heat up for a few minutes and then boom, five minutes later, they're all ironed. Okay. There we go. Winter Quaker from Jardin Privé is the next one. And I'm using this for... My categories, it is designer that starts with a J and that would be Jardin Privé. So I am working on that for that. So there it is. This piece was not finished. I had left quite a bit undone. So I finished all of that. I did a few little odds and ends that needed finishing. And then I really tried to concentrate on this element right here. And I was so close, but this is a lot of counting. <laughs> I'm finding uh, this winter 
one so far seems to be the the most counting with some of the elements uh, more so than some of the other pieces so it's gone a little bit slower in that sense but once i finish that uh it'll get easier because this element is a lot of solids then you've got a you know, a couple of trees, you've got the alphabet, which goes fast. And then down here, you have the row, the different rows of houses. And it's dense stitching, but it's pretty easy stitching. This is an 18 count sky from Atomic Ranch. And that's where we are so far. So I still have, I am more than halfway done. Halfway is probably about right there. So I'm not much more, but I am slightly more than halfway done. So we'll just keep going. This one will get stitched while it's the winter season. I know it doesn't feel like winter, but meter, meteorology, oh, you know what I mean. It's still winter until March, whatever, 20th or whatever. So I'll keep going with that one and uh, give it a go. And then I already have spring done. So then I can jump back into summer once I get this one finished. All right, now, another one that has a lot of counting where I am at the moment is Carolyn's Balloons Winter. This is the winter version. I finished the autumn and it's from Jan Hicks Creates. And yes, I do know that spring is being released during market. I have seen it. And uh, where am I? You're going to see a lot done on this balloon right here, this middle, this main balloon. So here we go. There it is. This is 18 count Lady of the Lake from Fabrics by Stephanie. It is, I always have to show it, it's such a beautiful fabric. I chose this one for the winter almost because it reminded me a little bit of, obviously, I've, and I know there's a lot of greens to the Aurora Borealis, but I think of the blues and the pinks and all of that, and I think of kind of like an, that kind of sky uh, and just made me go with winter with that. So there I am. I did mostly, mostly, I worked on the inside of this balloon. And you can see I have three of those finished. All of those still have to be done. This balloon and then this balloon, which is not 100% finished, but the colors here are, some of them are similar to here. So I'm going back and forth. Those two of all the balloons have the most intensive counting. So they have been the toughest for me. And have gone the slowest. I think the two, so there's five balloons total. Those two over here, they have cool designs and they're different, but they won't, they will not, uh, they won't take as long as these two, I think. And then of course, down here, you have the cute little town. I don't think that'll go very long either. And what I did say before, and it's tough to see here because it's on the gray, it doesn't show up. She has charted big snowflakes, which I can show you. I have two of those done. Those are what I'm considered big. She has some smaller pieces and then she has some stray one stitch snow pieces. I am not choosing to do the stray one stitch snow pieces. So what that means is that some of these charted will be moved a little bit. For example, this one was very close. It was much closer to the balloon, I believe, almost like right on the edge of it. But because I wasn't doing some of the other stitches, I was able to move it a little bit more center in there. So I'll be kind of deliberate in where I put those when I have the different balloons in. I'll play around with it. Up top here, there's some single, you know, the four stitch balloon uh, snowflakes, kind of those little pieces. There's some of those right there. So I'll put those in uh, next time I have that color out. But, uh, and that's it too. That'll be a whole section. I wonder if I think this balloon right here is outlined in white. And I think on this fabric, it's really going to pop. So I'm super excited about that. So when I get that color out, I'll start filling in some more snowflakes. But this is a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. I've enjoyed the balloons series so far of the two that I've been working on. And uh, I will do all four. Uh, I've committed myself to that. And I think I'll have to get it in person and pull the flosses, but I think I'll be able to stitch the spring balloons on the same fabric that I used for autumn.
and then we'll see if the summer will match up with this one. Then I'll have kind of like a alternating sort of theme with the, with the balloons and the fabrics. All right, let's keep going. I am efficient today. I find myself not rambling as much. <laughs> I don't know, I guess, you know, maybe it's just kind of the dreary sort of day today. And it's funny because it, it's, it's actually quite warm. Um, I could have worn a short sleeve today. It's one of those weird days where your highest temperature was some point in the middle of the night while you were sleeping. And then by tonight, it's going to be quite cold. But right now, well, it's kind of raining and that, I want to say it's probably mid fifties. So up here, it's a little warm. <laughs> and maybe if it wasn't raining, I'd open up a window, but clearly I'm I'm not gonna do that and the window's right there so if the rain came in it would go all over my stitches i have a finish i finished forest from satsuma street so that's what it looks like if it was stitched on a neutral now this is not a crazy color but i did change up the fabric color a little bit and here we go it's done and i had this little guy right here to finish up with so we are officially finished with forest I want to say, no, I'm not going to say. I was going to say, I, I was trying to guess how many finishes I've had. I've had at least four, maybe, so far this year. And I should, 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 should. I'm going to show you something that I should be able to finish next week. So we'll see. So there we go. This will go in the scrapbook. I have no idea what the background colors for this are going to be. I'm almost afraid. You know how I like to pull out colors in the piece to... to highlight the stitching with the background cardstock, but this one is very, very out there. Unless I do something, maybe a navy. I might be able to do a navy because that would look nice with those colors as well as the fabric. And I think that would kind of draw them out. So there you go. I just talked it through with you. I think that's what I'll do. But there it is. It's done. I don't know when I'll fully finish it into the scrapbook, but that's it for now. Exciting. And I do not have right now, so that was my 25-7 piece. So I would stitch on it for 25 minutes a day, seven days a week. And after I finished that one, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, to be honest with you. There was none that were particularly calling to me that I absolutely had to put into that slot. And that's helped me. I think I've, I started it last year, you know, sometime late last year. I finished, no, not the mid last year. I finished four pieces by using that 25-7 method. So I am I really like it, but I'm wondering now for the next few months if I might choose a piece for one month that has a decent chunk to do and maybe just use it as a 25-7 for a month and then move on to something else so that I can get some of these pieces that are a little bit bigger and have a ways to go yet, get them a little bit closer. We'll see. So I did take a little bit of a break for the rest. Once that was finished, I didn't choose any other 25-7. So we'll see. We will see. Okay, so the next one, uh, I did finish up my rotation on my this full coverage. This is, and I meant to look. I, you think I know for na by now? It's cross stitch. Oh, there it is. Cross stitch for everyone, which is a shop on Etsy. It's a full coverage shop. This is I'm calling it Bottled Beauty, and I am. <laughs> I'm still up there. It's so funny when you look at the piece, you don't really realize some of the colors that really were brought in with the stitching until, you know, to, to create the backgrounds. So when I pulled those out, those are really dark, dark colors. And I, I, I was kind of like, what? But then now, obviously, when I've looked at this again, and then as I'm stitching it, it makes a lot more sense. So it'll be a while before I get to, I, I can't wait to those beautiful blues in there. It'll be a while, <laughs> but it, this is not a huge, huge piece. It is 264 by 238. So it's relatively, you know, I mean, look at what with wise, that's it. So there it is. That's where I finished from this rotation. I did definitely over a thousand uh, stitches. I meant to look, it's probably a couple thousand in the end that I did. This was really nice because for the most part, there was, not like one stitch confetti everywhere. You'll notice I have one little open spot, but otherwise up here, it is all stitched in. And then this was just changing colors that I didn't get to. Now this is, 
this is pretty, it's been pretty good in the sense of even if you were to use a paper chart and I am still, I still love my paper charts. I have to say, I do enjoy the feeling about them. It's kind of like books. I still prefer reading books in my hand rather than on a device. It must be something tactile, but the, you don't even need to blow up the, uh, pattern it is very it's it's a good size everything is easy to read and so when I look at that in comparison to some other patterns I have which are tiny uh it's nice because you definitely can see easily 18 count white ada two strands over one full cross so this one gets put now into the rotation and I don't know when we'll see it again I have stated it before, and I'm sure I'll state it probably almost <laughs> every video. I am not going to do a equal rotation and do every piece equally this year. It's much more going to be what I feel like stitching on, especially on those. You know, you have to really feel it. If you're not feeling it, that full coverage would be really difficult to do. So, all right, next, this is one that you may see almost every week because I really, really like it for Zoom calls. Um, it's actually in my categories, at least one prompt. Depending on how I'm stitching, I might do it for a second prompt. I'm not gonna get all 12 completed this month because I don't think I have enough J words to go for this category, the categories. But uh, you will, the long and the short of it is, you'll see this quite often. This is from Owl Forest Embroidery and it's the Black Vintage Sampler. And I am stitching it with Anchor Black. So I chose to keep that rather than doing any sort of navy-ish or deep blue, which I did think about. And there it is. This is done on an 18 count rainy day. How appropriate today. <laughs> this is prettier than what my sky looks like outside, I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is a very, very pretty fabric. It is from Bestitch Me. And I, it, it's blue, but you know, it has, it has that hint of gray to it. It really is aptly named. And let me make sure I have this over enough. Like many of my other pieces with borders, I do the border with the stitching so that everything, ouch, lines up. You know how at the bottom of, I have a TV tray table that I'm putting everything on. And you know how one side is open and one side has the little, it's a little slat, you know and my foot keeps hitting it because I have the table in the wrong direction. So if I say ow a few more times involuntarily, that's just because I keep whacking my heel. All right, so here we go. And you know, I mean, this won't be very noticeable, but I do keep plug plugging away at the border. This clock is now, I was gonna say completely finished, but in this little section here, there are some single like two stitch, two stitch, two stitch. I just didn't do that. I. I I want to wait till I have small strands of something if I've done a different element and then go back and do that. And we have a, did we have the cat last week? We might've had the cat last week. We now have half a bat. And uh, we have half a man. Now his jaw, his face, along with the woman, those are backstitched. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that as I go or if I'll wait, that might be the only backstitching in the entire piece. So I may wait because that won't take very long once we're finished. It's clearly obvious that it needs to be done when you look at it. So I know I won't forget about it. I think I might wait. So there we go. Love it, love it. And like I said, this one is an easy zoom piece because not only is it monochromatic, but there are sections that I can count without really worrying about messing up. And that, that I re that's, that's how I choose my Zoom pieces. I, you know, you're, you're talking, you're looking at other people stitching, you're kind of looking up and down and also sometimes not paying attention. So I want as easy as possible when it comes to what piece I'm putting out there when I'm doing that. All right, next. I have been showing you the picture of this pattern on my iPad, but I am almost done and you've seen it every fairly regularly the last few weeks because I was looking to get it done. It's not quite done yet. This is Valentine tree. So this time I'm just showing you the print off because you're going to get a sense of the pictures in a minute. 
And if you're new, I'm not stitching the word Valentine and I'm not stitching 14 Feb. It's just the tree itself. Now this is a, a Rivaris design and it is from the Spring 2022 Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine. It's cute. And given the colors of this design, I did choose to keep it on a neutral. Isn't that cute? This is 18 count tiramisu and it is from Under the Sea Fabrics. I have a very small piece of this and that's it. And I really like it. I think I might have to get some more. So we got a good chunk. I, I gave this several days. I did stitch, it on, stitch on it on Valentine's Day, which I did want to, but it did get more work because I was thinking maybe I could get a finish on it. No, I didn't. And maybe I'll throw this one in for 25 seven. It shouldn't take me more than a couple days because really all I have left are leaves here and leaves here. So I have 10 leaves to do. And they're the same design as all of these. So it's not too bad. This took some time because this was a big little chunk of stitching. And then I tried to do, I was trying to figure out, I know how I want to finish this. I know what I want to put up top here, but I need to find that or I have to figure out how to make it. So before I say anything, I want to wait on that because I might have to completely change it. Um, I did a little searching on Google and I couldn't find exactly what I wanted. So I'm still, I'm still thinking about it. We'll see. When I know, you'll know. But that's it. So this one, I was going to put it away after Valentine's Day, but because I am so close to a finish, I, this to me seems silly keeping this until the next time I feel like stitching on Valentine's. So this one is set in my plans to stitch on next week or this, this week between now and next video so that I can get a finish. So hopefully next time I am doing a video, that one will be a finish. It should be. I mean, it really should be. It's one color and it's 10 leaves. So next one you do need to see a picture for, although it's starting to come together. Oh, what did I just do? There we go. Before too long, you might not need to see a picture. This one is On the Beach from Emma Congdon. And I've just, Citrovia. I had blanked out. I was like Emma Congdon, but that wasn't her Etsy shop name. Her Etsy is Stitcherovia. And sadly, well, I'm happy it's not snowing, but this was my snow stitch for the year. And it, I've had to, I've had to resort to bringing it out for other things because we have, except for stray flurries that were gone after an hour on the ground, we've had no snow this winter whatsoever. I have no idea if we're going to. It, it's looking a little dicey now. I mean, frankly, if it does snow, it's not going to last very long because we're already into heading it, rounding into the end of February. But this is what it looks like. And I am plugging away. This one has a lot of color changes, so it goes a little bit slower than some other pieces, but it's so much fun and I love her colors. You're going to see this, I focused on this girl right here. And uh, what else did I do? I did some more of this person in the water. So you'll see. Oh, and a few other things. There's like a little few odds and ends in the sand itself. So there it is. Now I did put this on my acrostic for the magazine monthly cross stitch challenge because again, it's not going to see, it's not snowing. It's not snowing. So it's not going to, it would get no work this winter. And the whole point I put it on as a snow stitch. Now I know we don't get as much snow here in Delaware, but sometimes, you know, I mean, it's cold. You get some last year we got a big storm, a big chunk of snow at one time. But I figured, you know, we'd get enough that it would get some work because I'm getting to the point now where I would like to have this one finished by the end of this year. Helen D is doing it as well. Now Helen started and she's got all the water done. She's working up here. So Helen, what about it? Should we both try to get them done for the end of this year? She's a very fast stitcher. <laughs> She'll get it done before me. <laughs> I can guarantee it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this person is, there's a little bit of backstitch and I am choosing to do the backstitch at the end. This These are supposed to be sunglasses. So there's, you know, a little bit of backstitch there. But other than that, 
Let me see, did I get every stitch? Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll look and I'll be like, oh, there's a stray stitch because it was a one stitch color. And so I'm gonna have to look at this very closely when I'm done. For example, the inside of these balloons need to, or umbrellas need to be done, but those are different colors that I'll pull out when I get that color. So I finished that, which was a lot of stitching. I put, now, it wasn't snowing here, but I did put on a Hallmark movie and it was at a ski slope. So <laughs> there was snow almost the entire movie unless they were inside. So the spirit of my snow stitch, it got some stitching while I was watching snow somewhere else. And then like, there's a small little element there. I got that. And then I started to, after I'd finished this huge chunk, I decided to finish a bit more and work on this. So there wasn't much done there. I, oh, I think these are supposed to be flip flops. I think they're supposed to, yeah, there's supposed to be a little bit of back stitching on that. Might've done those as well too. This is 18 count beach sand from To Die For Fabrics. I thought this was a fun color to do because it really does kind of look like sand and this will be full coverage with the water. So you won't see that, you know, it'll be just all of the sunbathers up to the water. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I mean, I'm not formally doing the before after pictures or counting anything with the acrostic for the challenge group. I just found four pieces to fit for the four uh, word acrostic, four letter acrostic, excuse me. And because I, I wanted to at least have this C a little bit of time, I put that in. That was E for Emma Congdon. So there we go. This little guy, Oh, I love stitching this. Actually, it's the girl. It's, is it? Yeah, it's the girl gnome, actually. I always say little guy, but this one with the braids. That's what it looks like. So this is a set of three from Wonderland Ukraine on Etsy. Now it is Friday morning at 10 o'clock. And I want to say, oh, yep, sale ends in 30 hours right now for the next slightly more than a day, they are having a 50% off sale. So for those of you who might be tempted, I know a lot of you have said you've liked to look at the gnomes, even some of you who are not normally known people. And I am not normally a known person. I have to say, I have come to appreciate how beautiful they are mixing and matching colors uh, with the flosses and, and pulling out the colors, I should say. So I find these so satisfying to stitch because they're so beautiful as the picture emerges, even though I'm not a gnome person per se. I am not stitching that, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. There we go. I'm not, <laughs> me and technology. I'm not stitching that, I'm not gonna touch it this time, <laughs> that brown block or at the bottom, the grounding circle. I've chosen to tackle these gnomes by finding a colored fabric that they don't need that kind of background. And here it is. It's a big piece because the gnome goes to about here. These are big. This is, I'll bring it up though, because I'm nowhere near that. This is an 18 count opal hourglass nebula from Fortnite Fabrics. And I'm not sure if you can see the sparkle. There we go, maybe. It is beautiful and it is so fun stitching it in person because as I'm moving the piece and I'm stitching, it just sparkles at me. I am slowly finishing. What I'm doing is I'm, as I find colors, the same symbols elsewhere, I'm going back and filling in. There's quite a bit to this hat, a lot of different colors. So I'm almost at the point where I'm done. I'm really just in this section right here. And I don't think I have any stray, no maybe a few up there, but for the most part, no stray uh, stitches that need to go in. What I really wanted to concentrate on though, I did do quite a bit on there. And then I really wanted to concentrate more on that flower. It too, I haven't done the center part of it, but it too is, is got quite a bit of different shades. First you've got white and then ecru, and then you go into the different shades of the blues. So I'm really looking forward to having it finished. I think the more I stitch it, even though this outer border kind of blends in, I think you're going to be able to tell what it is when everything is stitched in. I'm still reserving the right to potentially backstitch that part, but I don't think I need to necessarily. 
And if I did, it certainly wouldn't be like a dark color. I would do it with a, a much lighter floss. So that's where we are. I'm really enjoying this. It was a piece that I think it's part of my acrostic. And then I just put it as a piece in February that I'd like to see several times. There's a section in my, in the planner book that I use for as a stitching planner. And there's, and it's one of those like planner things like I plan, I, I commit to this habit or that or whatever, you know, in certain months and they have like six circles. And I, for that, I've totally taken that over to be stitching related. And so for those six circles, I usually try to pick six different pieces some of which which I have been ongoing stitching, some of which that I haven't stitched in a while, and I, or maybe ones that are close to a finish. And I kind of put them in there just to see them a few times in the course of a month, or at least once if it's a piece that I haven't stitched in a while. Like there's one on there that I haven't gotten to yet that you haven't seen in ages. So I do want to pull that out soon. Um, so this one, and it's winter, right? I've been, I've been stitching the gnomes for their season. So through February, I'll stitch this, and then when March hits, I will start one of the St. Patrick's gnomes. I have one more piece to show you, and then we'll be done with this, that part. Uh, after I was done, boy, I am really mess, messing this up today. After I was done with Bottled Beauty, I pulled out Mini Paris Morning. This is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and it is Uliana Babenko is the artist. Yes, make sure I get that right. So that's what it looks in total. I am doing the mini version. There is a larger version available. And I'm doing a little bit of everything. So I can't say that I'm completely done in one section or another. This up here, the leaves over the glass and the door is a ton, a ton of confetti. So that is going slow. What I do is I pick a symbol. I try to get what I can done in that section. Then I go to something where it's a big, big block of color. And then I kind of go back and forth because if I just tried to do that confetti, I'd get so stuck in it and that would be it. I wouldn't want to do it anymore. I do have to open it up because I did stitch all the way from one end to the other. So those stitches right there are the the actual end of that uh, curtain. So you can see it's not super wide and it's actually not even super long. This piece is a 243 by 325. So obviously higher than wider, longer, yeah, taller than wider, but there we are. And what I did is I did want to see, I gave myself, again, uh, these borders, I don't think they're ever going to be equal. <laughs> on each side. I don't know what I do. I mean, I'm fine with the border on this side, but this is going to have a much bigger border on this side. I did want to stitch all the way over here to see how far it went. Plus, you know, sometimes I feel like doing the pinks and those, there's so many fun pinks there. So let me do this for a second. So I did go over there and I finished all that. And then I did do some more over here to kind of keep going with that. I did fill in some more of the confetti and then when I would switch to a bigger chunk, I did quite a bit of the sky. Cause you can see here, there's a couple different colors. That that you see is a different blue than this blue, but it's easy to follow along. And I've been, I've been finding that if I do that first and then just fill in with the deeper blue, it works better. I'm getting to the point where there'll be clouds soon. So that will be a little bit less of a block stitching, but that's okay. So there we go. I think this has had maybe three days of stitching so far. I got a, I got a good amount done. The days where I focus a bit more on confetti, I try to stitch at least 100 stitches a day uh, on the piece, my chosen full coverage. And I did get that in each of these days. In fact, one day I th when I did a lot of the blue, I got 200 stitches, but that's because there was just a lot of just stitching there. It was easier. As my other full coverage and all of them, they're 18 count, just white Ada, full cross, two strands over one cross. So this will get at least another four days. The last piece got seven days bottled beauty and I kind of liked that. So I'm gonna go in between seven and 10. I'm not gonna keep it as a set date. If after seven, I wanna do a little bit more, I will. 
if after seven I'm looking to change to another one, then that's what I'll do. So that's where it is. So you'll see some more of that next week. I have no idea where I'll stitch. It's it's really a mystery to me. I'm, I'm liking these, uh, because here down here you've got the whole edge of the door almost all the way to the bottom, so there's a lot of purples. I like those too. So when I'm in a purple mood, I'll go there. And if I keep following that all the way down, we'll get to the bottom section and see where it goes. So that's my stitching. So this week for plans, I want to finish Valentine Tree. I do not have a designated 25-7. I will continue at least for four more days on Mini Paris Morning, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there and see how it goes. I do want to work on my categories pieces. Of the 12 categories, I have four that I have pieces for that follow, the, the letter is J. So um, we want to get some more stitching on that. Now I think the Jardin Privé, I might, there's no stitch count number. So it's just that you, you can show that there is progress. And I think there has been, I have to look to see what my starting picture was, but uh, that one's pretty much done. At any point I could probably call black for, uh, the Black Vintage Sampler done, although I'll be using that all month anyway. So if I keep it towards the end of the month, that's fine. And then I have two others that I need to work on that I was able to do definite categories for. So we'll see. We'll see what you see. And then I do want to start deciding my fabrics on my March starts because I have three starts that I definitely plan to start in March. And I don't have the decisions for all of those yet. The only one I have a true decision for, I think, is the, is the gnome. I think I do want to do that opal that I got on the Friday night fight night. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then um, the others I do. And then I have three pieces that I'm looking at on my table of stitched finishes that I'd like to fully finish into scrapbook pages. I have them, they're interfaced already, so the interfacing's on the back. They're already cut down to the size I think I want them to be. And I have already decided the background base piece of cardstock for two for sure, one possibly. So hopefully maybe I'll get some time uh, on the crafting table this week and try to maybe get some more finishes because I want to keep filling up the scrapbook. I have a lot of finishes, so I'd like to get them fully finished and have them in the book and be able to enjoy them that way. Okay, so that's the loose plans. Happy mail. I got some fun happy mail this week and I wanted to do a quick show. I I remember I told you that I participated in Beat the Modman event on Whip Warriors. And I mean, you have to not only choose the correct person from the admin team, but then you also have to stitch more than them. So the, and be the one that stitches more than anybody else who's chosen that person. So the odds of winning that I figure are slim, but, and I didn't even have a great, great, as good a stitching time as the last time I participated, but I won it. And so I, they do send you a prize for the winner. So this was the cute little card and, uh, they did send, which was kind of cute, a couple of these for thread What's the official name? I mean, you hold them, you hold your thread there for the projects for them. I'm not really sure. This one would be cute to do <laughs> my gnome pieces. <laughs> and then I chose, so you look in a section, depending on if you live in the US or if you live overseas, you know, there's different prizes and so on. And I saw this one and it's all beads. So <laughs> we'll see. It is from Mill Hill and it's spring book, part of the spring bouquet to, um, line and it is an anchor so you knew <laughs> I saw that I said oh well that's small so if it has to be all beaded I think I could possibly do that I'll do one of the other mill hills first I think but I thought that was fun so that's what I claimed as my prize and then I got this super cute card from Linda and Linda is a wonderful sewer seamstress and made me this is my second um mug cup holder which i'm so thrilled about because i use the other one all the time i have different sections up here where i stitch so this will come in super handy i don't have to carry it from place to place <laughs> i love those colors thank you so much and thank you for your kind words i really appreciated that and then i got this beautiful stitched card. So this is, again, this should go on my stitching scrapbook. Isn't that beautiful? 
Isn't Sally talented? And I adore, so not only, so you have the stitching and you have that part of it, but then it's almost a mixed media. So this right here is a little tag attached with twine. What a lovely, lovely card. It's gorgeous, actually. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it, love it, love it. Such a great idea. And I haven't done it yet, but fringing your edges, you could do that for trading cards. You could do it in the scrapbooks for cards, tags, all sorts of things. It's a good way to end it up. And Sally, being quite a lovely person, sent me a couple charts. This one is from Stony Creek, uh, is Frankie and Friends. How adorable is that? Super, super cute. And this one from Prairie Schooler is Evergreen, which I actually have really wanted. And I want to stitch them separately as little ornaments. So I'm super excited. And there's actually, what, two more you can see that are not in the big picture. So I'm going to have so much fun choosing those to stitch as ornaments. And I have never stitched a Glendon place before, but this is beautiful, Woodland Wonder. How absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Your kind words and your thoughts of me and your beautiful card. I mean, sending this to me alone is just, is a treasure. Oh, bye. It's so wonderful. So thank you so much. I really appreciated that. And then I have one piece of shopping, only one. So. <laughs> I bought these, remember, what, so it's a couple of videos ago where I was really struggling that Friday. I was really struggling that weekend. And I decided I needed a little bit of retail therapy. I'm surprised I only bought, I only placed one order because frankly, you know, that seems to be the time when you sometimes do the most shipping, uh, shipping, shopping uh, when you, uh, when you're feeling a little bit, not yourself, right? So, well, I shop all the time, but it's, it always adds a little bit extra when you're not feeling yourself 100%. So anyway, I went on to Rolanda, Rolanda Fabrics by Rolanda. Again, that is Carla from Carla Being Crafty's Fault because she's always showing her fabrics. And uh, so I went on and she had some 18 count Ada available because it's one of those stores where what you see is what's available and that's it. There's no custom kind of things. Although these do have names, which is interesting. So I'm wondering, I'd be really curious if these get repeated. They're beautiful. So if they do, <laughs> this one is, they're all 18 count and I picked up four because I couldn't decide. So I said, I'm just gonna make myself feel better when I order these. This one is called Phantom Mist. So this one is a beautiful, let's see if the light picks them up today. It's a beautiful gray, kind of a char chalkboard gray. Isn't that nice? Really, really nice. I have the twisted, well, I have the, the, you know, the twisted band samplers where one of them, so there's a set of two. One of them's called twisted band. I'm not sure what the other one's called. I have both of them. I bought them as a set. One, you can get the version with the specialty stitches or you can get the version all with the X's and various different people are stitching the different types. I, I bought the, just the X's. I wasn't, you know, I, I like my Ada. I'm not planning on trying to, I want to enjoy that stitch because there's a lot to it and I want to use what I like to stitch on. And I've debated on, I don't think, so there's one that's shown on black and one that's not shown on black. And I, I don't necessarily want to do the black, but I thought about this color maybe or something equivalent to it might be nice. So that's a thought, but I don't know. I would want to plan the two of them because, you know, one is on one side and then the other is the other. So it'd be kind of cool but I want to kind of coordinate things. I do want to start that. One of those two samplers, I think in September. So I have some time, but I have to keep it on the back of my mind that I want to figure it out. This lovely piece is called, now some of them are different sizes. The, the Phantom Mist is a little bit bigger than, for example, this. She probably had like, this is the shortest. Is this the smallest of the three? No. So there's two that are, Two are 17 by 26 and two that are 17 by 21. Uh, probably just the size that she had available, but that's fine too. That's still a great size. This one's called Champagne. And again, it's a great light kind of yellowy peachy without being too bright. I think a lot of things would look good on this. If I didn't have, and I think I got, I ordered this before I got the 
opal one from Friday Night Fight in. I think I was thinking that I would use this for the St. Patrick's Gnome. So what I'll do is I'll keep it out. I'll put it next to the, the other piece, which I think will work, but I'll do double checks. And if that other piece doesn't work, then I'll use this one. Because I think those colors would pop on there. This one is called Lilac Mist. You know, I'm always looking at some purples. And she did have a darker pur purple, which I think, I believe, in 18 count. But I chose to go with the lighter one. I thought it was fun. I like the variations of colors. So there's that one. And then the last one I got is called Blue Gray. <laughs> aptly named because it's basically a blue gray. Isn't that pretty? This one would go with so many different things. Really, really nice. So lots of fun. Um, I, I'm really liking these colors that I've seen from her. Uh, really enjoying them. And basically I just keep, I've got the shop favorited. So whenever she adds stuff, it will let me know. And I mean, obviously it depends. It's not always the count of fabric. Most of the time it's not because I pretty much just get the 18 of choice, but it's fun to see if there's anything that's come out that's new. So that was it. That was the shopping. I do have one thing that was kind of a back order coming in. So it should come hopefully this week, some point. So you, hopefully I'll show it to you next week. And then I did order some stickers for my stitching planner, but you know, there are things like the months and the holiday, you know, things like that. So nothing super, super exciting. Um, uh, if there's anything that's pretty and stuff, I'll show you. I, I don't know if I bought any that would go towards my uh, stitching scrapbook. I think most of them were more planner based. But there's some beautiful, I've noticed, and I don't know if you've noticed. So you've got the washi tape that's just the traditional washi tape, really thin up to different widths of tape. But I'm seeing now washi tape, and it's a, it's so it's wide, it's like this. But the stick, they're, they're, it's not just a straight piece. You take the stickers off. They're washi tape stickers. So you have to be very careful when you do those types. I've got some that are like that because they're very thin. But they're very, they're beautiful. And it's really cool. It's a whole new avenue of washi tape to explore. <laughs> Which really, what do I need that? But I could see a lot of those going in as accessory pieces in my stitching scrapbook full cover, uh, full finishes. So We'll see, maybe I'll, maybe I'll splurge at some point with some of those and I'll show them to you because I don't know if I even explained it right. All right, giveaway. This week, I, in honor of my th three years of floss tubing, uh, I did, I'm doing three giveaways and it is for $20 gift certificates. And I had listed one, two, three stitch, top knot stitcher, garand stitchery, because I know for a fact that they offer the option for a $20 gift certificate. I believe Etsy, the lowest you can get 25, which is why I didn't mention it. If you have a favorite shop and they allow me to do a digital gift certificate and they allow me to do it in the amount of $20 and you win, I'm more than happy to support whatever store you'd like to support. It just has to be not all of them allow that specific amount. A lot of them, some of, quite a few of them will require more than that. So just as an aside there. But this is the type of thing where I will buy it and I will be able to send you the code or whatever it is they give me um, or it's sent directly. I don't know how 123, can't remember how 123 Stitch does it. The other two, I believe, give me a code. I don't know. We'll work it out. So what I would do is if I do call your name and I'm going to call three names out of the bowl, ooh, um, I just need you to email me the address you want it from. So if, even if it's the one you're sending me the, Hey, I won email kind of thing, just put in there. Yes, this is the email that I would like that sent to. And then you'll need to tell me which shop you'd like the gift certificate from. All right. So I'm going to mix this around because we had understandably a lot of people putting their name into this one. So I want to make sure everybody has a fair shot with it. All right. So let's pull out first name. So the first person is Tammy Vickery. Congratulations, Tammy. You are my first winner. So if you could let me know what shop you'd like to get certificate from, uh, I will take care of that. My second winner is, who's this one? Debbie Hendricks. Congratulations, Debbie. You've won. All right. 
final winner here. Let's see. I'm gonna go from try to dig from the bottom. And our final. Oh, there's two, and I don't wanna I don't wanna say that I saw anything, so I'm gonna make sure it's completely fair. And try pull apart. This time make sure I only have one name. Yes, I do. And the last winner is Louise Tilly. Congratulations, Louise. So please get back to me within the next two weeks uh, and I will, we'll, we'll go from there. So think about where you want the gift certificate from. Let me know and uh, we'll go. And I'll keep, if for some reason I haven't heard from one of these three people in two weeks time, then I will re-choose a winner. So I'll keep those names for that. Louise, Tammy, and Debbie, congratulations. All right, so this week I am going to skip the giveaway because that's what I'm doing uh, for this past week is a good chunk of a giveaway. So I'm gonna give myself a break and I'll wait till next video before I do another giveaway. I'm sure you all understand. All right, so that's all the stitching stuff. That's all I got. So the last part is just life that I'm going to talk about. So it was sort of eventful. My my. I would have been able to say to you that my porch was completely, completely finished. Well, they would have been doing the final caulking this morning. But when they went to open up the box, well, they did. They opened up the box for the, so we're getting a storm door. You know, we're not getting like a door door. We're getting a storm door. Um, and this, it's a, it's a mid. So, you know, maybe the bottom third is, you know, that, I want to say plastic metal. I don't know what the material is, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, and then you've got the window in the screen that can go up and down. Well, when they pulled it out at the bottom of the door, there was a huge, huge dent. So the manufacturer or whoever sent something that was not either that or somewhere along the way, when it went from one place to wherever, it got a huge ding. And it was funny because I was coming out and I could tell from 20 feet away that there was something wrong with this door before I even got to it. So. Unfortunately, we couldn't use the door and they did not have any more in stock. So we're gonna be a couple weeks waiting for the door, but everything else, my, my poor DMC storage, everything else is completely finished. They have all the stuff done. They did a really nice job. Cause I, it was funny because I wasn't even, I saw a picture of a porch that they had done similar. It wasn't been, gonna be exactly like ours because we have windows and then we have transom windows up top. But I had some sort of idea of what the outside would look like, but I never really even thought about the inside because the inside, you know, we've dealt with basically just all screens, you know? And I didn't even think about it, but they've done such a, a lovely job. So you have the windows and then, you know, how they've got the molding around everything. And even at the bottom, it, it just has interest. They have a little tiny ledge that's, you know, so we have maybe about this part that's not window, you know, it's wall that they had to build. And then they did like a little ledge. And so, which, so it, it I'm really, really like it. It's, uh, it's pretty. So once it's completely done, like I said, maybe I'll try to do a stitch with me in there. Like I do believe it'll be way too bright for an actual floss tube because it's all, windows they're sliding windows so you don't even have like right here the window i have right next to me here you know is the up and down so it's broken up by some panes and the thing with the sliders except in the middle it's all just window so you've got all of that and then all top has all transoms so there's so much light that's coming in that i think it would wash out pretty much anything that i showed you um but for a stitch with me or something it might be fun or some other kind of video like that so we'll see Hopefully, I would like to uh, do something from there at some point. Um, so that is 99% done. We just need a door. <laughs> so we want to wait because we did buy like an indoor-outdoor rug that we were going to put down. But until I get the door, I don't want to put that down. Um, then we can put the furniture back. Mo it hung like the big bulb lights around the edges. When we head as a porch and we'll do the same thing now, uh, which I think will be pretty, but all of that's gonna wait um, until everything is finished. So hopefully into March, it will be better done and then we can go in there. So that's that. This weekend, Mo had to um, 
he actually had to do a little bit of travel this weekend. So he was not home this week, this past weekend. And so actually Super Bowl Sunday, I, the house was empty. It was just me. I did not watch one second of football, pregame, commercials, nothing, nothing at all. What's funny is I thought I'd get a ton of stitching done. And I don't even know what I did, but it was one of my, it wasn't a humongous stitching day. I'm not exactly sure what I did that day, to be honest with you, but I stitched, I did. And, uh, but I didn't watch any, and I don't mind football. Honestly, I don't really care. I mean, I'm a Giants fan, but I would have rooted for the Eagles because, you know, we're in kind of Eagles area, you know, Philly's right there. So, um, but I don't know. I just, cause it was just me. I was like, you know what? I, I I'm going to not, I'm not going to bother. So I didn't. Uh, so I don't know anything about any of the commercials this year. Didn't watch any of them. I didn't watch the halftime show, although I hear it was very good. So, uh, so yeah, so it was a quiet weekend, obviously, because it was just me. And, uh, so I did some stitching. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Like I said, what else I did. I don't remember. <laughs> it was quiet. But Mo was back. He took, he had to travel back. And so to give himself an extra day, he, he did uh, take Tuesday off. And uh, not because it was necessarily Valentine's Day. We don't ever do like humongous, you know, elaborate things on Valentine's. We're pretty simple. Um, we don't even exchange gifts. We just pretty much do like a meal out or something. So what we did was he, uh, he actually, he spent the morning with his doggies at the animal shelter. So he was walking all the dogs. And uh, then that's about a half an hour away. And so right down the street from there is a Thai restaurant that we'd really, really wanted to try. And according to the reviews, they're also very responsive to vegan options and you can get tofu for everything, but also they understand that fish sauce, you know, you can't have that if you're vegan and things like that. So after Mo was done and he, I think he did his volunteering until noon. So he went over there and um, we ordered a ton of food. I mean, this was more than one week. <laughs> can tell what a restaurant thinks of how many people are going to eat by how many when you do take out how many utensils they're in <laughs> I think they had utensils for four people and it was just for the two of us so he got a ton of food because we wanted to try a bunch of different things see how they were first time we're trying he said they were really great when he said we have to be careful with vegan and they were very careful with what they did and some things we couldn't get or whatever and so he brought home and we had a big big lunch um and then that was dinner the next day actually because we had enough left over that it was two full meals plus a little bit extra I think so um that was really really good so now we have a place that we 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 both really like Thai food and we haven't really found a place here yet uh oh we did it was in Ocean City Maryland but then um the owner sold it so uh and this is it might be the same distance but to travel especially during season to get down to Ocean City would be really tough versus this is much more inland. So it won't really matter. Even if you're in the summer, you're not gonna have that beach traffic, I think, for the, I think. Um, so we could use that one a little bit more year round anyway. So that comes in handy. So yeah, that was our Valentine's. We just had a really great, we were, oh, we had a really great lunch. And then dinner we were eating, well, I had to eat something because he decided to make margaritas. I am, I am not one that most of the time, you know, if we go out, I'll drink, you know, maybe I'll have a beer. Most of the time when I go out, I do that. Sometimes at home, I'll have one glass of wine. I am very much a, a cheap date when it comes to alcohol. I don't drink a lot of it and I don't drink it that often. But, you know, I enjoy, you know, something that's nice tasting. So he decided he wanted to make margaritas. And that's the one thing, because they are very high in alcohol, that gets to me. And so he had, I had one margarita and then he had a little bit left so a little left uh, of the other and that was it Ooh, I don't think I stitched that night <laughs> and I mean I did make sure I ate because if I had those on an empty stomach forget it all together but really it was essentially one margarita um we had a lot of limes and it was Valentine's Day and he said yeah let's I want to I'll make some I said, all right that's fine and we just you know kind of had an kind of a quiet, easy dinner because we'd had the big meal for lunch. And I didn't have to cook it, which is even better. You know what I mean? Because I cook all the time. That's basically what we do for most of our meals. We very rarely eat out. So, uh, 
maybe once every two, three weeks. We might do takeout. Sometimes we'll eat out, kind of depends, but for the most part, we eat everything at home. So that was fun. I got two different meals because then the next night I didn't have to cook either because we had all of the leftovers that we were able to have as well. So that was, that was fun and it was a nice Valentine's Day. I think we did, I think we did go, we did go down to the beach and do a quick boardwalk, a walk on the boardwalk, although it was a bit chillier on Tuesday. Wednesday it was gorgeous. Mo wasn't able to go because he was working but I did go down to the boardwalk. I took a walk, I did some stitching and it was, I think in the sixties, it was beautiful. I had, I think I did have a long sleeve, but it was a very light long sleeve top and I had no jacket. I didn't need one, even it was windy, but I didn't even need one because it was that warm wind, it was beautiful. So that was really nice and I was able to get down there. Did I get down there after that? No, no, I haven't because I didn't go yesterday. Yesterday was a, warmer day but then now it's going to get cold and today is just rainy so we'll see <laughs> we're not getting to the beach today but that was it so it was you know it was a nice week you know have some you know I had some appointments during the week whatever right um and uh yeah this weekend I don't know what we're doing we haven't really decided lacrosse season will be starting soon so then weekends get a little bit busier because she'll have home games now, depending on the away game, if it's close enough, we'll go to the away games. But if they're really, really far away, we probably watch them on TV because most of the time everything now is streamed. So you can see it on TV, which is fun. But we will be taking trips up to Pennsylvania on a little bit more regular basis. I just said the winning names flying <laughs> um, just because that'll be starting up. So that'll get that'll make our weekends a little bit busier. I'm looking at the weather for the first game and it looks like the high of 35. I'm not. I'm not thrilled. I got to tell you, one more season. If any of you have had kids who have played sports, you know, right? You know, in the fall, it's beautiful with the fall sports until the fall goes and then you're freezing. And then spring sports, they're warm when it ends. But the beginning of the season, man, is tough. That's the high of 35. I think the game's going to start before that high. So... I gotta pull out my winter jackets. I don't think I've worn my heavy winter jacket in over a year now. So I gotta figure out where it is because I think I'll be wearing it that day. But anyway, that's about it. I think this week's just gonna be kind of mellow, a little bit more mellow of a week and uh, I'll take it. That's fun. So we'll see what I get done for stitching and uh, all of that good stuff. So I hope you are well. I hope you are safe. I hope you are getting some stitching in and take caring, taking care of yourself because you matter and you are important. And until next time, Happy stitching.